and they can just go and wedge it in and just go. Done by hand. Yeah, we have a hand bender. It, it likes to bend a lot of hands up. Yeah. To get your fingers caught in it. No, I think chips. Oh, it's some chips or something? Yeah. What kind of chips were they? Vinegar and uh, barbecue. Salt and vinegar. Oh, barbecue. Oh, okay. All right, hey guys. So uh, this is gonna be a short little video on turbo drains. Uh, we do quite a lot of turbos uh, just because they're kind of a performance, uh, they're more performance engine than all the rest usually. We do like quite a lot of 140s too. The two more main performance ones, 140 turbos. Uh, sometimes people combine the two. Anyway, one thing you have to do a lot of the times uh, on conversions to turbos. People usually want turbos, but they don't want to buy new turbo heads. So they want them to be converted, you know, convert a 95 or a 110 to a turbo. And one thing you have to do is you have to add a new turbo drain to those heads because the turbo on a stock head has a, literally a drain that's pressed into a boss that drains directly into the rocker arm area. And so uh, this is some pipe that we bent. We bent it with a bender, I'll show it right now. We bend these to 18 degrees. That's what the stock ones are. They're not exactly the same as what Chevy did because Chevy kind of did a little wedge bend. Uh, it doesn't look very good. Uh, it's kind of pinched down right at, the, right at the bend. So there's a shoulder that's forged into the tubes from Chevy, uh, where of course these, it's a tube, and we're not gonna like try to put a shoulder in there. Anyway, uh, the hardest part, of course, is machining the head, adding the boss, machining the head to where you can actually press one of these in. Uh, but these are as good as the factory does them, uh, and they come out very nice. And these the turbo heads can be used uh, pretty much right out of the box on, on a regular turbo. So that's pretty cool. They're also, this tube is also through a four stainless, uh, which is better than the steel that the stock ones came as. So they don't, these can't rust or anything. Uh, they also hold up to the temperature much better. There would be no corrosion or anything. So uh, now I'm gonna show cutting them up. So out of, out of one of these tubes, we usually get three bends. We'll probably think about doing some other kind of method because this is not super efficient, but anyway. So here's a little example, guys. This is a turbo head. This is actually one of the ones that we just got done in the videos, uh, in the head videos. And so uh, this is the drain right there, right? And that's the stock one. You can see it's got a little bit of a crushed area there when they bent it. Uh, and then you can't see, but it's got a step. It's got a, you know, a, a lip on the back as a uh, step to prevent it from getting pressed in too far. That's really for manufacturing so that when they're making these, when they're pressing these in, you know, they didn't have to do some really precise thing and measure it every single time. They could just go and wedge it in and just go. And it was done. Next one, done. So that's, that's just for manufacturing. But for us, you know, we're not doing high production. So this is the tube. And you see if I put it right where this one is, it's the same angle. Oh my God, look at that, it's crazy. So uh, that's, what, uh, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna cut this out, so it's gonna cut. I'm gonna cut a little longer. So that's, uh, yeah, you know, this, uh, this is the right, that's the right bend. It should work really well. And uh, now I'm gonna cut them out. I'm gonna try to get this to be exact. Don't worry that it's a little twisted. Uh, this is the first time I bent one of these. First time I've done it. <laughs> so I think I bumped it when we were doing it. So well, what, what if I clamped it like this and cut it there, and then I and then I and then I couldn't clamp it anywhere else? That's the problem. You don't also it's have a mic. You also don't have a microphone. So so you're you're not uh, oh. real. Oh. You're a figment of my imagination. No, I'm just kidding. Safety officers here, guys. Hello. <laughs> Safety officer's gonna go make a cup of coffee. Okay, go make a cup of coffee, safety officer. <laughs> sir, yes, sir. So, you missed me cutting this, but I cut one. Is my phone overheated? Anyway, so this guy I just cut uh, and I, I face adjusted a little bit, and I think it should look pretty good in there. It's very hard to figure out what the actual flat, in plane surface of that bend is. I think it looks pretty good. Looks uh, pretty close to the original. Of course, it all comes down to actually pressing it in. How does it look when it's pressed in? I'm gonna cut the rest of them, and then uh, we're gonna show you uh, not the welding, unfortunately, but we're gonna show the machining, that 18 degree, this, basically doing this hole in the head here to press that new drain in there. So, that should be pretty cool. 
we have the plate of many holes. There are many holes in this plate. Yeah. Some of them can be used, some can be not. You must figure out which ones yeah. are useful and which ones are not. Or you just have your way with a drill and a tap, or you just start drilling a bunch more holes in it. And pretty soon there are so many holes in it, you have literally no idea what anything can be used for. Anyway, this is the, uh, the again, like I said, the plate of many holes. This is what uh, we use to get a specific angle on these heads. So this is for angle ports and also for turbo drains, as you're gonna see right now. Wow, look at wow, that. Wow, look at that. Hey, when you got all the holes. That's awesome. You see, that is the welded boss of the turbo drain. You weld that whole thing up, you basically made it. I made it out of? Made it out of welding rod. Mm -hmm. uh, that was not there before. Yeah, this is a 95 head. As you can see, right here in this thing, and it says drain right there. So that, that's how you know that's a drain. Otherwise, it just looks like a blob of, of welded aluminum. <laughs> yeah. And you go, what the hell happened to this head? Yeah. You gotta make it out of something. Gotta make it out of something. So this is basically gonna go right in here. Bam, like that, All right? So we're gonna machine this with an end mill. These are uh, 5 8 Mm-hmm. Just right there. So 5 8 end mill goes in. Let's see, is there any kind of wiggle room it. on this or is it now really? Tiny bit. Yeah. Got a angleometer. 18. Exactly. The thing is, this is probably a little too precise for how precisely bent these are. Yeah. They're not like perfect. We're not miracle workers over here. No, it's not like we have a CNC bender or anything. This is just a no. done by hand. Yeah, we have a hand bender. It, it likes to bend a lot of hands up. Yeah. To get your fingers caught in it. Yeah, but no. This is to cut the flat in it. Mm -hmm. So first we gotta cut a, a flat here as a... But even more first than that, we have to move the head back. The head is too far out. I guess your reference is how close that face is the on the is, yeah. corner over there mm -hmm. to the... To the I can't really get closer, I'm gonna hit the intake here. Yeah. That's a long end mill. Wow. Did you specifically get this to do this? Mm-hmm. Look at how long this end mill is, guys. Oh, shit. This is where you go, what the hell are you doing to this head? <laughs> you saw this out of context. First, we gotta get it in reference to the hole, the, the drain. Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. Threaded yeah. hole. So hand me that one. I'm gonna look in here and see. Basically, we gotta figure out I'm the position gonna... this way. And then the depth. I mean, the distance from the back wall is an eighth of an inch, I believe. So now we got that done. Let's take this back out. Ah, yes. Classic drill bit, drill bit in the collet. You just gotta get the right collet. Just gotta get the right collet. Now you jump straight to the big guy, or are you gonna do another step? I'm probably gonna do half. That's it. That's as far as we go. It'd be cool if there there was a, a mill that was mirrored in a handle on both sides. Probably is one. I there would probably guess. is one. Mm-hmm. It's probably very, very, very rare. Mm-hmm. Extraordinarily rare. Cool forming right there, WD-40. Flicked off my finger. Oh, WD? Finger. <laughs> no, I think chips. Oh, it's some chips or something? Yeah. What kind of chips were they? Vinegar and... Uh, barbecue. Salt and vinegar? Oh, barbecue. Oh, okay. They weren't like so should we go Cheetos or something. That speed or should we go slower? Probably a little slower. Ready? I was just going to flip the lever. Oh, you want to do lever? Yeah, I do lever. Yeah. It looks so funny in the camera. Look at this. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's like, what the hell is going on with this head? How is it just at some in random angle mm -hmm. like that? Oh, is it done? Mm-hmm. Oh, wow, it was so exciting. Would you look at that? Well, That's a hole. Be. It's all in the head. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, uh, so that hole's there now. 
and this is gonna go in it pretty soon. So yeah. yeah so we'll now clean we'll clean the head up and then do that. Yeah. Now we'll, we'll we'll clean the head up and then we'll probably press this in tomorrow, and uh, we'll show you guys that process of pressing this in. It's uh. Not that interesting, but we'll show you guys no. the process and then we'll show you guys the final result compared to a stock head. And the funny thing, it actually intersects the valve cover. You don't think? Yeah, they do. The, even the originals? Yeah. The factory ones? Mm -hmm. Very good design by Chevy. Immaculate. Now we're gonna show pressing it in. So right now, guys, this, the hole's machined. The, it's flat on the top. There's a little bit of flat on the side too. That, Right now it actually fits in there because the hole is not. It's just what it is, and this is like slightly smaller than the, the and, tube and itself. This is, yeah, and this isn't made with a 5,000 interference fit or whatever Chevy used on yeah. on their tubes. There was all, you know, swedged together. It had this little swedged uh, uh, stop on it, so they could set the diameters to whatever they want. Yeah, and uh, give them the interference they wanted, and they just had them in a box. So when they. Had a machine, pressed them together, and we're done. So in our case, since I can only buy 5 8 tubing, I can't buy a 5 8 plus 5 thousandths. And you also can't buy an end mill that's 5 8 minus 5. No. I guess I could uh, get a whole bunch yeah. of reamers, reamers. Oh, and, and slowly ream it no. to this is fine. 5 under. No, this is fine. So we're going to use the 2,000 degree epoxy. The uh, oil coming out of the out of the turbo, out of is, the turbo is not going to be no. 2,000 degrees. It could, I have never tested this, but it could very well be upwards of 500 though. Yeah, 500, yeah. So this is what we're going to use. Durabond 954, 2,000 degree Fahrenheit, metallic adhesive. Yeah. And so uh, we're going to mix a little bit of this up, but we got to get, we got to clean these two parts. And I use a lot of acetone. This, I can't believe this hasn't been that long that we bought this gallon and it's already, already another gallon. Mm -hmm. Durabon comes with this shake well material. There is a, a cure, cure 24 hours room temp, then two hours at 200 F, followed by two hours at four to 600 F for maximum strength. I use this also when I have to glue in the exhaust tubes. Yeah. When, when they've been removed improperly and the holes wall it out. Or sometimes when I'm gluing, when I have to put in angle ports and for whatever the reason the, the pipe fits loose. This is what I want right here. Kind of, kind of gloppy. Mm-hmm. A little viscous, but not too viscous. No. I don't know. This was really hard stuff to find. I got it out of New York. Talked to some lady over there. It's a pretty nice lady. She, she had a very heavy New York accent. Mm -hmm. You hear? Mm-hmm. That's it. I think it's in. Yeah. And it doesn't move. It's it twisted a tiny bit, but I mean that is just it. Yeah. It's in on the bottom. You can see it's sticking out of it. Mm-hmm. So let's touch. Let me have a. Have a look. Mm -hmm. There's just a little spot here. Oh yeah, maybe a sixteenth off. Maybe a sixteenth. So yeah, and you got enough rubber. So this is stock. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what the stock one looks like. Very good. Mm-hmm. Very similar. Of course, not exactly the same, but but hey, you can't for a, ever, for a head that didn't ha ever have one, that's yeah. And also, you can't buy fun. drains. <laughs> no, you can't get drains. You can't get a drain unless somebody pulled it out of a head, and if they did, it probably broke it or destroyed the mm -hmm. the drain. Yeah, and then the guys don't have to screw around with trying to add a drain into the valve cover. Yeah. Or like we got a 140 head. It's got a it's got a three eighths pipe nipple in there. Yeah. Just straight up. It's just Whew, nasty Terrible. looking. Yeah, you see all kinds of stuff. That's it, guys. Yep. That's uh. See you on the next one. Pretty simple job, but yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Adios.